This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we're going to start with uh, knowing the difference between classic and uh, lightning framework. When you say classic framework, then what is the interface architecture the classic framework is based on? Question to you. What is the interface architecture the classic application is designed? How do you how do you call that architecture? Name the architecture. MEC, right? Model view and controller. Isn't it? Your classic architecture is basically MEC architecture, model view controller. So we'll have a uh, the view. And we have a controller. And we have a model database. So this is our MEC architecture. What is the architecture the lightning framework is based on? The lightning framework is based on, is also called single page application. How do you call the lightning application? You also called as single page application. When you say a application as a single page application, when the application, when the application is returned, When the application is written in one HTML page, in one HTML page, and which will have, which will have HTML itself plus CSS plus JavaScript. And this JavaScript will behave as a server. You got me what I'm trying to say? What I'm trying to say here? The JavaScript is behaving here as a server, which means <coughs> most of the most of the the controller Apex, this server side controller, right? In an MEC architecture, this server side controller, right? So all your uh, uh, non-database operation whether you write any business logic to process the data, which will not have any dependency on the database we perform in the controller. And any database operations like uh, DML, SOQL, so we, right, we depend on uh, server-side controller. Everything we return in the server-side controller itself. Whereas in the case of a single page application, we'll have in another uh, a controller called client side controller if you able to follow this we have a client side controller so this is client and this is my server so here if you say if you say here server then server is basically this two element, uh, you know, we call it as a server. So all the logic that you would like to uh, perform, either it's a database or non-database non operation, it needs to be returned in the server state controller. So what happens in the case of uh, Lightning Framework? It's a single page application, which means in one in one page, you love, you know, HTML, CSS, 
JavaScript together. So this is whole thing is basically run on the browser side. Can you able to visualize all of you what I'm trying to explain here? Are able to visualize all of you? Anybody has any queries here? Able to visualize? So single page application says, single page application says, it refers to a web application. It refers to a web application. You can see the definition here. It refers to a web application, uh, you know, which runs inside a single HTML page that residing in a browser. Where where the HTML page uh, will reside? It is in a browser, right? It's a client. And in in say in the classic application, we'll see we'll have only HTML and uh, JavaScript and uh, uh, CSS. But JavaScript, we are not going to handle <coughs> the logic here, right? We are not going to handle logic in the classic side. Everything will be performed in the controller side. So any uh, any data you request, it has to process in the controller and then get the data from model, then it's going to return back, right? So by default, your uh, Visual Post application is, by default, your Visual Post application is a synchronous process, isn't it? <coughs> How do you implement the sync, uh, sorry, synchronous process? How do you make your Visual Post application as a asynchronous process? How do you make a Visual Post application as asynchronous process? Anybody? <coughs> How do you render only the part of the page? What is the asynchronous process? It will not hold the entire resource, right? Suppose I like to, uh, you know, save one data and uh, return a, a result in the another block. Then what do you will do? <coughs> what do you will do in Visual Post application without refresh the entire page? Without refresh the entire page, what do you will do? Yeah, feature method is basically to perform a, a run your Apex asynchronously. But I am asking. The user interface without refresh the whole page how will you refresh only the part of the page how do you make your interface to work to work asynchronously i need to refresh only the part of the page you remember re-render attribute right re-render attribute and uh, we have a uh, action support isn't it and what about ajax toolkit Ajax Toolkit, you remember Ajax Toolkit, all of you? Remember Ajax Toolkit, where you have a, a include a library of Ajax and we'll have a SPOS functions to perform a DML from JavaScript itself. So these are the additional <coughs> script or additional uh, uh, effort you will have to incorporate, incorporate in your Visual Force page to make your application work as a asynchronous process to work as a synchronous model right in order to refresh a part of the page you have to incorporate all this whereas in the case of lightning framework whereas in the case of lightning framework it happens by default it goes to be asynchronous it's going to be asynchronous it's going to refresh a part of the page uh, without incorporating any of the script or any of the additional element here the reason it has a javascript client side controller and all the elements together in the client side itself okay then what is the architecture we may call in lightning framework we have model sorry yeah model and we have view and we have a, a controller we have a controller and we have additional controller mvcc architecture you can say mvcc it's also mvc architecture but additionally we are going to have a, one more controller called client side controller right so this is your apex right in classic it is your apex and similarly here you are going to have a apex here as well here also you are going to have apex so this apex is going to handle uh, the database related operation when i say database related operation then you will say dml and the sop got me you able to follow this so this basically will have a uh, additional controller called a client side controller. So this client side controller will take care of a non database operations. Okay, it means uh, you will not going to perform a DML here. But before you perform DML, all the logics that you are going to uh, you know uh, handle for your business that is going to be handled in the client side controller itself. So we reduce the dependency on 
we reduce the dependency on the server side controller in the case of lightning framework when you reduce the dependency on server side controller then obviously that will improve the performance of the page isn't it you agree with this when you when you communicate uh, frequently to the server side for every information you need then what would happen the page loading right because the page has to wait for the data the page has to wait for every things you perform right so in the case of lightning we handle most of the business logic in the client side controller which reduce the dependency on the server side controller that itself will make your lightning framework performance better than your classic you able to follow this all of you able to follow this you got the basic differences in the interface architecture you got the basic difference in interface architecture you got the basic difference in interface architecture all of you can you respond so we have a html css and including you no know, along with that we have a lightning tags <coughs> no lightning tags in the sense you know as you have in your classic like apex colon page apex colon uh, command button right so lightning tags basically again you know they have a namespace called the lightning uh, colon we have a, a button we have <coughs> we have input okay we have a library of uh, you no know, tags that can be used in uh, uh, you know interface creation and you can also use html directly and it will have a css in, in addition to that it's going to have uh, some more elements okay that's going to be called as bundle that you are going to discuss later i'm just going to, uh, trying to give you a basic architecture difference okay the basic architecture difference if you see this diagram so this is what you are going to see it in uh, you know in, uh, in the case of uh, selfos guide wherever you see you will see like a uh, you, this is your classic that's what i explained here okay is your classic every database operations either it's a uh, i mean you will write in your apex controller and non database operations will also handle in apex controller right and by default your visual force classic application is asynchronous right in order to make it sorry synchronous i'm sorry synchronous in order to make it asynchronous then we have to incorporate in additional elements like a re-render action support or action function or ajax toolkit isn't it ajax toolkit we, you hope you remember ajax toolkit what i'm trying to say here Remember the Ajax Toolkit, all of you? This is what your Ajax Toolkit, right? We'll have a JavaScript here. And uh, so this is basically whenever you have a, any, any logic you perform in JavaScript, right? Then from the server, you'll get the data asynchronously, right? We don't uh, rely on controller here, isn't it? We don't uh, depend on controller. It's directly uh, get to the server and uh, get the data. So basically it's asynchronous. We don't, it's not going to hold the entire resource, right? So in order to refresh a part of the page, you have to incorporate all this additionally. By default, is this synchronous? But in the case of Lightning Framework, by default, is asynchronous, and it handles most of the non-database logic in the client-side controller itself. Okay, we have two types of controller: M, V, C, C. Got me? Able to follow this? Able to follow this? Right, you see here. So we have a, a you know, a, the model, a server where we have Apex. So Apex is going to remain same, right? So whatever whatever we learned in Apex, you know, where we'll use your list, uh, set, map, and all exception handling, and all the predefined Salesforce class methods, inter right? Everything you're going to add interface. All all elements of Apex is going to be remain same in Lightning Framework itself. And we are going to additionally going to you know uh, see this framework. This is a UI framework, right? Lightning is basically uh, you know they uh, uh, know improve the UI performance. They try to improve the UI performance, so they introduce Lightning. If you like to see the the detailed uh, you know history of the development, you know how it how they introduced Lightning. Can I have a quick look on it? Look into it.
So what was the architecture they introduced in the beginning to develop the application? It was S force. Now, what you are seeing as Ajax, right? What you are seeing as Ajax. So, it was a, uh, you know, the, the application in the beginning, you can say 1999 till 2006, right? It was in 2005. It was a architecture where developers, if you know, if you need to create an interface, now they have to write with the help of the framework called S force control. We call them S force control. You know, well, then how the application is written? We don't have visual force page by the time. We don't have visual force by the time. So we have to uh, create everything with the help of HTML and uh, CSS, and then and all the logic you have to write within script JavaScript as you. You know, as you return everything in your uh, Ajax toolkit, right? So this is how, right? Any developer has to uh, write a create an application. You no, know, there, there should be a skilled JavaScript developer because everything is going to be JavaScript. In addition to that, we have a HTML to have an interface. You got me? So this was the the first ever, you know, uh, the interface architecture, how the application was developed, you know, in Salesforce, and so this required more. Uh, skilled developers to create application, right? So then Salesforce introduced a visual force predefined tax, right? When you say visual force library, you know, right? Your Apex input field, right? It's not like your HTML, right? HTML is not integrated with your database, but what about input field? What about a command button? Command button can, call a controller method directly command right input field will able to bring the self force object field in your interface right so all these predefined components can can do more what one html tag will do isn't it so it makes a developer uh, you know uh, the effort you know reduce the developer effort uh, in creating the interface so they introduced you know a visual force tag around the 2006 and you know, to replace you know the s force controller so visual force basically supersede replacing s force controller so s force controller was the architecture we had in the beginning now you know they introduced 2006 you know as around 2006 they introduced visual force framework you know in order to reduce the effort where you know you don't need a skilled javascript developer in this case right so it, it introduced a lot of uh, components where we have a Apex, Apex to write the uh, logic and they introduce a list collection, right? Set map. So it makes a, you know, application much more uh, performance rate more better than S force control. In S force control, you cannot handle large volume of data. Got me? You will follow this. Then, you know, they, they reduce the server side you know, dependency with the help of Lightning Framework. So Lightning Experience basically they introduced in the year uh, 2014, and you now we call them Lightning Experience, right? So your classic basically mostly a desktop, uh, a compatible application, right? So in the classic, it's mostly desktop compatible application. When you uh, you know see the page of your Salesforce, you know, uh, before Lightning Experience in uh, no they you have only uh, compatible in to run in uh, desktop when you see the same uh, similar interface in your uh, mobile or tab it you, you don't see uh, some of the informations properly rendered okay and they also had a salesforce one they introduced salesforce one uh, you know it's a mobile application they introduced uh, you know around the 2012 or somewhere in between before 2014 no, it's mobile version of classic application. Okay, so then they introduce Lightning Experience, where you know you can uh, you will see the application can the the interface can run in any type of device. Lightning Experience basically device uh, non-dependent, right? It's uh, compatible for every device. You see the interface, right? The database is going to be remain same. Got me? Then they introduce Lightning Framework. 
lightning experience then along with the introduce lightning component development okay that's what we are uh, in the, uh, discussed in the in this that's what we discussed over here so this is your lightning framework so lightning framework uh, and component development introduced then later you know they now they are land up into now they are landing up into a framework called lwc lightning what is the extension of lwc lightning web component development so it is again part of your lightning only it's part of your lightning maybe i could say like in around 2018 end of the year they introduced the lightning uh, you know they more concentrated towards the the new framework lightning web development if you see the word here web right so basically they are trying to uh, uh, you know make your interface much more faster uh, to perform better than your lightning experience with the help of lightning web component so when i say web component the framework is basically uh, built based on global web standard web standard okay as you uh, see in your uh, uh the you no know, uh, the normal web developer how they develop the application right so all the standards what they follow you know the lightning web component you know is basically designed based on uh, the global web standard okay so we'll see this uh, framework uh, right right after the lightning uh, topics we are going to catch up lightning web component so basically it improves the uh, performance of your interface drastically than lightning okay so you got the evolution of uh, the application development frameworks you got some overview of how the uh, the frameworks they introduced and what was the uh, the reason why they go for a switch from one framework to another framework and what is it how the development evaluation happened you got some idea hope you got some idea right everyone Okay. Any question over here? Any question? Any question over here? People are able to follow this, all of you. Okay. Now we are, we are. Now we are in Lightning Web Development, right? Now we are in Lightning Web Development. Okay. So this is basically, you know, we follow W3 standard. If you check on W3 standard, it's you now it's basically how the uh, how the uh, the web application needs to be designed. Okay. So what are the uh then the rules what are the uh, rules we need to follow to design application so that's that's almost followed in your lightning web component development which means you know you can create a, a application which can run any type of device and you can create an application which is super fast you know compared to every other framework we have right so we have finally end up here okay but this go together now this go together now so whatever you are going to learn in lightning what you are going to learn in lightning that can also be used in lightning web component as well got me so whatever you are going to learn in lightning that going to be always you know can be used in lightning web component also but as you know all the customers are already been onboarded you know uh, using classic application then they migrate to lightning and uh, the new customers may catch up lightning directly and lightning web development directly right so all these three still you know we are we are you know we are using it still selfos is supporting uh, even selfos supporting espos control controller for the customers who are already you know who registered before 2006 right not 2016 even you know beyond that uh, because it was uh, you know replaced by visual force page later 2006 right but the customers who already been using Salesforce control, you no, know, the still you know we can continue support because Salesforce continue. You can uh, supporting the Salesforce controller architecture as well. But any new customers, we may not you know we should, will not have a Salesforce control, but we'll have a Visual Force and Lightning and LWC support. Got me? So all this, so knowing this classic and Lightning and web development is mandatory but more consideration you should you know you should uh, focus towards lightning and uh, lightning web development what me right you may work on a projects where you have a uh, you know where the old customers right still using classic even i am uh, 
seeing you now many developers are uh, no uh, still using a uh, classic right why why, the, why they, where they're working i just made a changes in classic application right because they are old customers already onboarded beyond before 2014 so they were you know uh, developed most of the things using classic okay so but but now they focus you no know, to convert your classic to lightning so you will have a knowledge on classic will always help and to work in lightning as well okay and any new customers every new customer is going for lightning and uh, and since the lightning web development is recently introduced right recent development happened uh, you may not expect all the new customer will directly jump into lightning web development because right we have we need a uh, right maybe a scarcity right a demand on developers demand on developers to find you know who can develop lightning web development you know expert in lightning web development right so they may go for they start from lightning then they will introduce lightning web development as part of lightning so both will can be uh, you know can they use both framework nowadays right so we are going to start with lightning component development and before i explain lightning component development let me give you some more you know quick difference between the um How the visual force and uh, lightning component development works. Okay. I call this as a traditional page life cycle. What is this? I call this a traditional page life cycle. So what is this? It's basically your visual force application, your classic visual force application, right? So in visual force application, what do you load in your uh, browser in visual force application? You load an URL, right? You load an URL, uh, which basically uh, send HTTP records, right? Isn't it? Suppose you would like to load any visual post page. Let's try logging. So you made a when you uh, load the page, right? What happens? We basically made a HTTP request, isn't it? When you hit a any load any page, it goes to the request post, send HTTP request to the server, and get the that particular page, right? So that. What happened here? Are you able to see my screen?
is not the reason. There may be some some browser issue. I don't know. Okay, let's go back. I just just quickly right. So what happens in your uh, classic right? So we send HTTP request first. Isn't it? We send HTTP request first. So I could say initial request. Then what do you get? What do you get uh, from the server? You get a HTML page, isn't it? From the server, you get a HTML page. So when you get a HTML, then HTML is a, it's nothing but a document, right? It's nothing but a document or a page. So what happens? It reload the entire page, isn't it? It reload the entire page. That's what your uh, Visual Force application I discussed in the beginning. It's basically, it's basically uh, synchronous by nature, which means every response you get from the server, the entire page will get reloaded. Am I right? Entire page will get reloaded. In order to make it, uh, you know, uh, asynchronous, we need to incorporate, you know, the Ajax uh, element like uh, re-render and all, right? Suppose, right, I get the data and I submit some information to the uh, server again, then what happen? What will happen? Then you will send a, write, write something. Then what is the request uh, uh, you will uh, make from client when you like to write something in the server? All of you attended my integration session, right? What type of request you send to the server in order to write something in the server? Post request, exactly. So we made a post request and uh, write form post request, submit the form. Then what do you get again? You get a HTML page, right? So every response you send to the server, every response you get from the server, that is going to return the HTML page by default. When you get HTML, then it means we reload the entire page every time you interact with the server. So that is your classic application, right? Which overloads, you know, every time you get the data, what will happen? It will increase a view state, am I right? Just, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a detailed discussion again, you know, whatever we discussed earlier, just a de detailed discussion addition to this, okay? To, to have a better clarity, got me? So let's see how the your lightning framework works for you now. And I have, I send the initial request here as well. I send the initial request. And it's again going to be a HTTP request. And, and you get a HTML page. You get a HTML page. And any any further request you made, any further request you made, then where you where are you going to make the request? You are going to make the request from JavaScript, isn't it? From JavaScript. We are not going to make a request from UI. It's it means everything is going to be first when you load the particular page, it's an initial request to the server and get the HTML page, you got the page. That happens in your single page application, right? But any any further request, any event occurred, for example, I and no, I enter the name of the employee and salary and then submit the data. Then what happens? Yes, the control will go from JavaScript. Any control you go, it goes from JavaScript. Then what is that uh, request? What is that request? The request is going to be a Ajax request, isn't it? When you made any request from JavaScript, then now we are made the request from JavaScript. It's going to be Ajax request, right? Then what is the response you get? What type of response you get in uh, any response you get from the server from JavaScript? Whether in HTML or uh, JSON? JSON, right? It's going to be JSON. Isn't it? It's going to be JSON format. Something like this, right? JSON format with command separate name value pair. So, any response you get from json then wherever in the client right wherever the client the data is related wherever the client the response is related only that part alone will get refreshed 
only that part alone will get refreshed only part of the page is refresh right so by default your uh, single page application by default your single page application is asynchronous every request you make from the client to the server you know it goes from javascript when you made a request from javascript it's going to be adjust request by default you got me so lightning uh, application is single page application uh, behaves works like this every request you made is goes from javascript it's going to be ajax and the response you get in json and in json the nature whatever the right data you get the part of the page where the data response is related only that part of the page alone will get refreshed so by default your lightning framework is basically a single page application nothing but you know asynchronous which improves the performance of your uh, you know interface compared to your classic able to follow this Right. So, what are the other advantage? What is Lightning Component Framework? What is Lightning Component Framework? How we are going to build the component? Right. So, this is my. We call them Lightning Framework as, which. Building of reusable component. Reusable component. We we made a it increases the reusability. Basically, your lightning framework increases the reusability of the component. Right? How it happens, uh, why it is how it is able, it basically helps you to uh, create a reusable component. In Visual Force page, suppose I like to uh, get the name. like this right like this i get some uh, data in visual post page then and this is my single page so where you will handle all sort of information where you will handle all the information in one page right so every uh, the tag every uh, you know the code required to create a page everything is in one single page isn't it so any changes you would like to incorporate any changes you would like to incorporate then you have to modify the entire page isn't it you have to modify the entire page so every changes you made basically you have to modify the page suppose i like to increase the length of the salary field or i would like to replace a pan card field with a different other field i would like to remove one field so any even small changes or any enhancement you need to modify the page and compile the page every time isn't it okay so there is no reusability is uh, you know very uh, minimal and uh, no even with the help of uh, visual force component of course we can uh, divide uh, the visual force page into different uh, with the help of visual force component framework uh, you can divide the entire page into uh, the small pages and so that other pages can you know suppose in visual force page uh, name phone city is you know i need in multiple pages then i can made as a one visual force component i can use it in multiple places but that is not the framework you know developers are habituated to use we always create one single page for entire interface uh, uh, for one page one visual force page you know will have all the necessary code everything uh, you know to create an interface that's what we habituated that's how the architecture is designed okay we less go for uh, dividing the pages into different small visual post component you know that 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 way we don't develop usually okay any new changes you are going to incorporate 
any new changes you are going to incorporate any other details you are going to additional details then you have to make every changes in the same page itself got me right let's see how the lightning frameworks works in lightning framework we create a components we create a components i name the component maybe as a, a personal detail dot cmp extension cmp okay dot cmp and there i am going to have only name phone and city i'll have another component and where i know i named the component as say for example uh, you know contact details you know there i'll have a, a phone and other details right i will have other details like a phone email etc and and i love another details like a hobbies or something another component so any changes suppose i like to add other phone number here i just have to modify this component alone suppose i like to made a changes in i like to add other phone number I'll alternate phone number or fax for example fax details i need to get then where i have to change i need not change the entire application right i need not change the whole page like in your classic i would only do the changes in contact detail component i do only the changes in contact detail component and recompile that component alone i'm not going to every time no uh, do the analysis the entire page any changes you made in classic that will have impact on all other functionality isn't it all other elements you need to make sure the interface designed you know is not having any impact because of the new changes isn't it the look and feel of the current page should not have any impact because of your new change that you are incorporating but in the case of lightning framework what happens because the lightning framework by default will divide will divide the interface into multiple number of components okay by default the interface architecture will enforce will force you to divide the component into multiple different component right obviously you know we are making different uh, small components and which reduce which increase the reusability which reduce the you know um, uh, recompilation got me which reduce the recompilation so any changes if you are going to incorporate only you made changes only in that particular uh, component like adding a new field like a fax and uh, suppose i like to add other details here right i can add only uh, the details or else if you like to create one more component you can create and include in the application lightning application so lightning application is you know uh, is going to uh, have different you know components we discuss about more how the application is can be built but this is a basic difference you know why we uh, you know uh, it in, in right in in terms of reducing the uh, development effort recompilation analysis isn't it so we go for because we it, it it by default we divide the application into different small components and it helps you to uh, you know modify uh, or add any changes or incorporating new component you know which reduce your recompilation got me you follow this all of you able to follow this are you clear if you see the lightning interface just if you have a quick look you know you will come to know how it lightning experience right basically is built with the help of lightning framework right Okay, so how many components we have in general here? How many components we have here? We have one, two, three, four, right? Take your uh, uh, record page. 
I just take the uh, a quick example of a lead record page. Okay, I just take a Yep, I just take this. You need this? You need this diagram or uh, I can delete this? You don't need this or uh, shall I upload this or uh, leave this? Changes, okay. See here. So these were, you uh, know, uh, uh, lead record page. And I have component one, right? This component is, is I can say, uh, overview, I, I, right? Overview component. Or I say preview component. Three of the lead details, right? Preview component. And this is the a detail component. Component two, okay, and I have another component, no, other component, other details. So there are three component, just you know, just for an example, but it have it may have more than three. It would have more than three, but I just give an example, three component. Right. So what happens if you have a if you see the preview component one, right? If you see the preview component one, and this component is going to be same same for even opportunity, opportunity as well, isn't it? For account as well. Let's check on account. I just want to see one the record page. So I have lead here, I have account here. So what is the difference between these two component now? Only the data is changed, right? You see here only the data is changed. What about uh, the detail component? The preview component, detail component? Only data is changed, isn't it? What about this activity other component here at the right side, right frame? So only these details are changed, right? So with respect to the object, we get the data, isn't it? So we create once the data preview component and use it in multiple places. I can use it in, I use it in opportunity, I use it in lead, account, contact, everywhere, right? Everywhere I need the preview, I'm going to reuse that component. So we create once, isn't it? We create once and use it in multiple places, isn't it? So by default, your lightning you no know, required you to divide the component, the application into different number of components. For me, so reusability, reusability is the main important. You know, uh, uh, you know the the architecture. Uh, uh, you know the the one we are going to follow in lightning development framework creating a multiple component and one component can be nested inside another component for me so if you see here uh, basically detail is a component it's another component okay detail is a component if you click on detail we get the detail right so component inside another component so we have one two three components like that you know just given an uh, idea about how the lightning framework is uh, basically interface is built Okay, so don't interpret exactly what I said here. 
it may have more than three or four components uh, exactly if you see this page but we'll see how to create similar type of page in the uh, further sessions right that's what we are connecting now okay we'll learn how to create a, a interface like this using lightning component development okay so before i do not want to jump directly into the uh, coding part reason i just given uh, you know quick introduction about uh, the evolution you know how the uh, interface uh, you know application uh, design uh, model was introduced from the beginning and now we are in lwc right start from s pose control and visual pose lightning then lwc right so and the reason why we switch from one application to another application framework you know what was the uh, uh, benefit you know we had from uh, s pose to visual pose and visual pose to lightning then finally lwc got me you follow this so we are in lightning now so later we'll you know uh, so uh, and what is the differences in what is what do you mean by single page application what do you mean by single page application an application refers to where the in, inside a single page will have a mockup mockup you know right it's lightning tag now in the case of lightning it's going to be lightning tag but single page application is referring to generic application architecture okay and we'll have a css and javascript and javascript here in single page application it's going to behave like a it's going to behave like a server right a javascript in single page application is going to behave like a server so server will handle most of the uh, data handling data handling and which reduce the dependency on the server side okay that increase the performance of your page isn't it and any request you made from a single page application we made from javascript so request goes from javascript is basically ajax request right you get the response in json and response the data know where the what data you get in the json response right the related uh, page of your uh, client will get refresh it's not entire html page you get right if you get in the case of your classic you get the entire html page as a response you get entire page html page as a response isn't it you follow this all of you Right. In the case of uh, okay, so we in in the case of single page application, it may be a request from JavaScript, isn't it? Because JavaScript is also part of it. So it's Ajax request, you get the response, that part of the page alone will get refreshed. So by default, you, are, you don't need to incorporate like your re-render or Ajax uh, remote JavaScript remoting, isn't it? JavaScript remoting is where, you know, it will made in order to call your server uh, controller method directly from JavaScript, you know, you will avoiding view state, you will go for JavaScript remote in the classic. But here, it happens by default. Got me? So these are the few things we discussed. So maybe in tomorrow's session, we'll start with coding part. What is component and uh, and all those other, you know, uh, things we'll start from tomorrow. So any question? How do you, how do you find this uh, content today? How do you find the content today? Any open question you have? Any open questions you have? You should know where we are, right? In the when you learn something, you should know where we are. It's not like you know without realizing anything, you just you know catch up something and uh, jump from one to one framework to another framework, right? You should know where, where we are and why we are uh, learning this. So you should know the ev evaluation, right? What happens in the uh, Salesforce, right? Anybody knows like uh, when the when the term CRM uh, came into uh, the business world? You know when the CRM term introduced? 
Anybody? When do you think the CRM term introduced? What do you mean by CRM? Customer relationship management. But how do you explain uh, what is customer relationship management? Anybody? It is not very related to lightning topic, but it's generic thing. I just like to give just take five minutes and give. Okay, because this is more than your technical knowledge. Got me? What is customer relationship management? Sir, custom uh, relationship management deals with uh, uh usually deals with the uh i mean uh keeping all the data with regarding the business in a uh, mapped way sir so that uh, we can have the uh, we can have the answers to the queries raised by customers and we can give service and sales management to them okay yeah yes, yeah, yeah you, yes you're right um a customer relationship management right you manage every relationship that you have with your customer so it's a kind of package customer relationship management is a kind of package which has all the features to manage your customer the data that are related to your customer what is the data that you will say relate to your customer the name of the customer phone calls emails right uh, the reminders email notifications and the product that you uh, sell to your customer the customer issues every information right what is the uh, interaction that you have with your customers through social network right so you may need some data from linkedin where the customer know you you like to interact with your customer isn't it so if you see nowadays right customers as you are the customer for for example an amazon or Mintra, for example, take a Mintra, right? So every a product you buy, and you will see, you know, you will be able to see those marketing informations in every social uh, media. You you right? You log in, isn't it? So they have able to interact with you everywhere. So customer relationship management basically a software which helps you to manage your customer data. When I say software, it includes the database, it includes the process automation. So that is your uh, Salesforce platform, right? It's a CRM tool where you manage every data about your customers, like in account, lead, task, everything. So it's a CRM database. Okay. In olden days, in olden days, in the beginning of uh, the information technology, you know, era, we had only an address book. We had only an address book. Was, you know, was was the one where we store all the customer data okay it was an address book where you store all the customer data pre 1950s right then they you know uh, move towards you know they introduce the rolodex it's a kind of uh, the desk accessory right where you love alphabetically you'll arrange a slip you know contact information so even you you'll see you know nowadays even it's it's there in amazon you, you can even get this in a type of Rolodex device in Amazon. Okay, so there was no a term, there was no package or software by this period. In this period, got me. So then they moved to 1980s, you know, database marketing, where you know you'll have a, a marketing uh, strategies also also been introduced along with the marketing. Suppose you know uh, you expect a product, uh, a, you know, a laptop, and another. Uh, uh, user expect uh, contact expect a desktop then i need to send a customized message right i need to send a customized message to 
uh, you know, one person who is looking for laptop and another person looking for desktop. So with the help of these uh, database marketing, you no, know, we are able to send. They just moved from uh, one, uh, you know, uh, part to another part. Just database marketing. Then in around 1990, they were, you know. <laughs> Can you put mute, uh, some of you? Really, you have to put mute. Okay. So, uh, Salesforce automation was happened, which means, uh, you know, uh, they're trying to automate a few things. And around the year 1995, they introduced a term called CRM. So, by the year 1990, they were uh, digitally, they were trying to automate the certain things. Digitally, okay. Uh, happens in uh, software. Uh, they develop the same thing from hard hard device to now it moves to software. The 1995 that they introduced the term called CRM. So when they introduced a CRM, it was no more like a just a database. It was no more like a just a place where you store the customer information. It became a package, like what you are seeing in Salesforce, right? We had a, a workflows, we have process automation, we have a, a no uh, uh, flows. And we have validation rules, everything like a package which pro will pro will give all the features to manage your customer data. It's not just a database storage; it is a management software. Got me? So then it was expanded uh, in the year 1998. Uh, further, more evaluation happened, and around 1999, Salesforce introduced a cloud-based CRM. It was there was no cloud-based CRM earlier. Then Salesforce introduced a cloud-based CRM. Uh, where the customer uh, need not install any software or uh, no, uh, they need not manage the, the data on their own. Everything is going to be managed by the service provider. Got me? So they pre built CRM software that you can access using internet connection, cloud based CRM. Isn't it? 2016, the cloud based CRM basically uh, will add provided uh, many uh, options to. Customize and develop a new application like you know your post.com platform now it, it, it's called as lightning platform Isn't it? So they jumped into more Customization features like okay, you will have Apex visual post we have uh, All schema builder many many features. Okay, so it was earlier. We have just a page layout and then, then they jumped into more uh, You know uh, scope for Developing a new application with the help of a lot of uh, so basically you can say platform as a service, isn't it? So this era, no, this is a period where we had a self software as a service, just an application you can develop, but less possibility of customization, less possibility of configuration. Like you know, we had only page layout to create interface, isn't it? But here we have all the possibilities to modify and create new application. That's how the CRM. So in chart, if you say what is CRM, it's a it's a management software. It's a software to manage your customer data. It's a software to manage and an organization can manage all the data that related to, you know, they have a, a, with their customer and the prospects inquiries, right? Okay, right. With this, we can close session today. We'll see tomorrow. If you don't have any questions, I can, uh, I'll sign off. Do you have any question now? No question. So, how many of you? Uh, job opportunities? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Still, I, I, I get developers reach me for uh, uh, now my own, I mean, uh, the, my old student, right? So, they're working in classic, some, some people. But I could say, I could say like uh, that classic dependency is drastically reducing now. Everyone is moving towards lightning. So lightning is everywhere you go. Lightning is going to be the future. Okay, it's going to be LWC. LWC is I could say not uh, completely replace the your uh, uh, job opportunity, uh, but LWC having this LWC knowledge now, it's also one of the uh, basic necessity now. Okay, so you should have a LWC knowledge as well. But if you are strong in lightning and catching the LWC knowledge is it's not a big deal. You can we'll see more relationship.
is between these two. What we are going to learn here, we are going, we are also going to retain here as well. We are going to use it here as well. Okay, both can be used together. Got me, right? So classic, uh, yes, opportunity we have, but you know, uh, because we are when you say classic, it's not just uh, uh, it's not about everything. What you learned? What about the trigger, batch effects, feature, your map, set list? It's it's a it's not your interface, right? Only the visual force part alone is replaced. Only the visual force part alone, the interface architecture is replaced with the help of lightning. Okay, right? So we still going to uh, we have we already learned many other uh, elements of Salesforce. We just going to see the different UI architecture now. When you say your architecture, and, and additionally, we are going to see. Uh, uh now the where the you can reduce the dependency over the server that's what you're going to see in the lightning development you got me okay so what are the classic knowledge you have uh, classic elements know that you need to uh just touch upon all those uh, use cases topics you know parallel uh, you, uh, but i i request you to focus more on lightning now so start your lightning don't delay for any reason Start your lightning you already delayed okay so industry is booming so you need to catch up you know you need to travel along you know with the uh, development right whatever happens in the sale post for me so do not worry what is the prerequisite to learn the lightning what is the prerequisite of course you should have a lightning uh, platform knowledge like your apex okay and some knowledge on visual force and you should have some uh, you know basic knowledge on html admin is necessary man admin is is where you you call you no know, we call call you as a salesforce developer or salesforce person unless you don't know what what's what's there in the crm platform you are not a salesforce resource right so admin is necessary admin is mandatory everywhere you every uh, role you play in salesforce okay so what you can do out of box feature Admin is needed for lightning. Yes, it's a prerequisite, right? Then when you write your Apex, then you should know, no? What is Apex? When you when I say controller uh, pointing uh, this uh, object or something, you should know, right? So lightning is necessary. Uh, sorry, admin is necessary, isn't it? But it's not. Uh, no, you need to be very strong in admin. But without your uh, be a strong in admin, you cannot provide a better solution to your customer, right? When a customer says and send an email, when I uh, do some changes in this field then uh, will you jump into coding right if you are not familiar with the out-of-box configura uh, configurations right declarative feature so that is prerequisite always okay admin is always prerequisite if you are good in admin you can will be good in development as well okay Right. So with this, we can wind up. Thanks and uh, 